Before we begin this episode, exciting news. Guilty Pleasures finally has merchandise. Uh Oh, yeah. We've got the Familia Racing Tee. We've got it as a crew neck and in a hot pink hoodie. And, of course, we have the Yuck! Yuck! Goofy's Fat Ass shirt uh, featuring the most delicious looking Mm. rump you've ever seen. Uh, We can't believe they let us make this. Can't believe it. And we have a sticker pack with all your faves, including Tucci Month, Guilty Horse, and more. Get it all at tryguys.com slash guilty. Ramble. Today's episode is brought to you by Rosetta Stone. Oh no, he died. Welcome <laughs> to Guilty <laughs> Pleasure. No, no, we're not doing that one. Which one? We're doing that. How can that be profitable for Frito Lay? There we go. <laughs> I almost made that. The wrong. <laughs> I fucking love that line. The point Guys, is, there's plenty. Welcome back to McAdams Mania. Hey. Welcome to Guilty Pleasures. That's Today good. we're talking about the criminally underrated, wow. uh, overlooked Ugh. comedy overlooked. game night. Oh stacked. my god, it is stacked. It is stacked. We can't believe. Also, guilty horrors. We're gonna call you out right now, Zachary. Yeah. Yeah. You have pretended. Yeah. Yeah. To have watched this masterpiece. Yeah. You literally last week literally. said, we're going to watch the criminally underrated. Yeah, because I knew. And you had never even seen it. Yeah, I do this thing, and it's a, it's a weird th- And I, I admitted this to you in confidence, and now I'm going to admit it to, to all the guilty whores in the confidence. The guilty whores are our familia, that, after all. That I, sometimes when I know that there's a movie that's so up my alley, and I've seen clips from it, that I just, I'm ashamed to say I haven't seen it. And yeah. so I pretend I give the impression that I have Lies. without usually explicitly saying that I've seen it. Mm. Um, I lie. Uh, but then I have a show where I make sure that I see the things I want to see. There, there you go. go. So we did it. You did Thanks. it. I have a sinus infection, too, by the way, if you keep hearing me go. Yeah, she was at a Ren fair rolling around dusty. in the dust yeah. oh. and tried to bully us into going. And now I'm glad I didn't. And you missed yeah. the time of my fuck. I might be going again this weekend. Wow. Yeah, it was that fun. Wow. A lot of anime nerds. Oh. I should have went. Yeah, they were, they were like dressed up as anime, and I was like, what? Did you see any Star Trek people? Maybe. They usually dress up as Star Trek characters and yeah. be like, oh my God, what are, because uh, there's a lot of TNG episodes uh, just in the Renaissance, which is very funny. Go to your local Ren Fair. Yeah. Game night. You've got <laughs> yeah. Rachel McAdams, Jason Bateman, Ugh. Jesse Plemons, Lamorne Morris. Uh, you've got a small little part from Jeffrey Wright killing it. Chelsea yeah. Peretti shows up to say hello. Yeah. Michael uh, C. Hall. Michael C. Hall Michael appears C. Hall out of nowhere. Me. What a yeah. surprise. Love it. This movie, uh, it was written and... or. It was directed by the duo behind Dungeons and Dragons. Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We loved that. You've yeah. got our boys, Jonathan Goldstein and John Francis Daly of Freaks and Geeks fame. Who does a nice little cameo at the beginning. In the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. That's what? Um, he was the, the head of the um, oh, trivia oh, oh. night. I yeah. knew I recognized yeah. him. Uh, so this movie came out in 2018. It just made a little blip and then went away. And what a damn shame, because this is a modern comedy gem. Yeah, please I, do this synopsis so I can go off. Yeah, no, I was just going to say that I, I, I saw this movie in theaters. I also oh, saw this in of, like, begrudgingly, because I had seen Wasn't the begrudging premiere, at all for me. And I was like, this looks like a, a, a Hasbro ad for everyone. Like, how is it rated? What it's rated? This is going to be so just... Bateman y in like a wholesome way, not in like the fucking awesome, fucking explosive game night movie that it was. But when I tell you, I stood up at the towards the end, the last like 10 minutes, we were all standing in the theater. It was so good. So if you're watching this and you're kind of like, why would I watch this? You want to fucking see it. Well, I had zero doubts in my mind when I saw it in theaters <laughs> at all. How is that I possible? knew Garrett was I doing De Niro face during that whole thing. The whole time. Because I was like, oh, Kelsey, you couldn't be more wrong. But how did you watch the trailer for this and go, it's going to be great? Because I, I saw Horrible Bosses and I was yeah. like, this is fully like the same type of humor. And I was like, oh, I'm in. And by I'm the way, in. you are you were right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was like, okay, if this is that but in a game night scenario, I I could care less. I Do you know John see- Francis Daly and and um, uh, Jonathan Goldstein wrote horrible wrote bosses as well. Yeah. Wrote the script. But like, it, I have to chalk this up to also the marketing of it because the sure. name of the movie is Game Night, and you're just like, wow, a game night gone crazy. Like, how crazy can it get? You have no idea 
how crazy it gets. I, I mean, it's a few things, right? It's it certainly the marketing missed. Uh, it just didn't capture mass attention. And also, we were in this time where comedies don't make money anymore, which is a shame because, like, <laughs> watching this last night, I was, sh I was, like, gasping. I was screaming. And this movie is meant to be seen with a crowd. It elicits... Such huge reactions from you. Yeah. Um, I, uh, again, with the marketing, as soon as I saw the billboard, I was like, this feels like horrible bosses. I think I'm going to watch this is, movie. Is it not it just... a Hasbro movie? No. Are you sure? Yes. Because yes. it has games in it. Like it's an. Don't shake your fucking. Miles just looked at me with the most disgust <laughs> on his face. Like, you dumb idiot <laughs> you think that you hasbro just... <laughs> made this movie I think it's it was not it's smart. not called scrabble or sorry or sorry anything or like the that. game of life like there are so many games they, so explicitly like advertised you got like yeah. you know, like it felt like an advertisement but it was an advertisement time. for murder mysteries not for like a game like a specific game which is what Sure. If, yeah. if Hasbro had paid for it, you wouldn't have gotten one of my biggest laughs of the movie, which is Kyle Chandler taking three board games and yeeting it <laughs> yeeting across. across the hall. <laughs> Jason Bateman and Rachel McAdams star as game obsessed people. They love their game night each week. They bring all their friends around. But these two, they are a married couple. They are driven to beat people. Uh, you have um, Kyle Chandler as his big brother coming into town. Turns out Jason Bateman has been having a little problem uh, with his fertility. Mm -hmm. He and Rachel McKay are trying to make a baby, and all the stress about his brother has always been better than him, more handsome than him, beats him at all the games. He's making his little swimmers uh, not so good at swimming. Yep. Kyle Chandler invites them all over for a game night that they won't forget, but a murder mystery party turns into a real kidnapping, and our game night friends have to go out into the world not realizing that they are in the middle of a true kidnapping plot. This is game night. Yes. Oh my God. Like, you guys don't realize. I'm going to say it right now. Yeah. The way this movie ends, you will never guess. Uh, this is... Um, the, the funniest movie of that year. A hundred percent, probably of the past couple years, maybe five, let's say, um, since it's come out, I don't think something has made me go back, watch, and then laugh as hard at... That's got to be like this. the pleasure that I start out with is like the first five minutes, oh and I'm so sorry, yeah. but it's it feels a little cheesy. I'm like, how are they building a couple's identity off mm. of a love of board games? Yeah. Like their proposal was a board game. Their wedding had Dance Dance Revolution. Yeah. Their entire idea, like literally everything. They're waiting in the doctor's office. They're playing a game. I'm like... This cannot be the same bit over and over and over again. You, right. The way that they, after, I really do think they introduce, like, the neighbor character, you start to go, You introduce, oh. they, okay, but they introduce him immediately. I literally took that video and then paused. I took a video of the Frito-Lay line because it is iconic. The best. And it is a minute and 50 wow. seconds into the movie. That's and crazy. kind of are like... So, Oh, yeah. this is going to be yeah. hilarious. It's going to be the best thing you've seen in a while because yeah. um, I think that they both in the directorial style employ um, Edgar Wright's style of like transitions and setting things up and getting things over with. So like you don't have to set up too much. It's, too much. Yeah. it's all in. Uh, you get it. You get After it in a like a really, really quick yeah. um, montage. It's shocking. I don't even know where I want to begin. Maybe we'll just begin. I mean, look, this is McAdams mania. Yeah. So let's talk mm. about our girl, Rachel yeah. McAdams. Can you believe this is the same girl from The Notebook? It is it's, her it's, range. Yeah. That's her all range I can think about. I love, that, I love that during this month we are going drama, drama, comedy, drama, comedy, because truly you get to see how well she plays in each. Yeah. You know, how well that she like, how, how comfortable she feels in either role. And the uh, Jason Bateman school of comedy is such a very specific, yeah. like, yeah. I, I don't know how to categorize it, but it's it's very quippy. It's and perfect. I'm a little um a uh, uh, little sardonic, and I'm just gonna. It's, say it's my very it's all, straight man. It's all straight man. It's all sarcasm and sh sarcasm a lot. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. she bounces off that Nails so it. Yeah. fucking She's well. A comedian. And yeah, she's, is funny. she's the funniest person uh, she, in this movie. She made choices where you're just like up against Bateman to be that funny right. for him to not be the funniest person in this movie is right. wild. Right, right. There is but also with him being the straight man in a lot of movies, he usually isn't the funniest person. No, he's he is the same guy. usually throwing yeah. a lot of comedy. And I think that that's what, 
you know, his talent, where his talent lies. I do have to just just stop here and and praise uh, Jason Bateman in general. I feel like with his specific um, comedic timing, I try to emulate a lot. Mm. He is so fucking good. I think that he is one of the top three um, comedic actors of our generation. Um, you got me onto his podcast, which made me fall oh in love my god. with him. Oh my god! Oh my god! Smartless, Smartless. is so fucking. There's funny. There's gonna be a docu series. They don't need our plug. Yeah. They're doing just. No. Fine. Yeah, they're but doing if, just you, fine. if you're if you're on the fence like me, where Jason Bateman is just kind of like a white guy who is funny. No. Listen to Smartless. Uh, listen to Smartless. He's very funny. I think that uh, he's so good in movies that I would pitch like a Bateman Bonanza or something like Ooh. that. Ooh. Because he's so <laughs> fucking. It, it Miles, is, you writing this down? Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah, it is. It, uh, again, he is doing the same. He's doing the same thing, but every time but you're perfectly. just like, "Oh my god, this is I mean, so there's, funny!" It, I, like, there's one scene where I'm thinking about shows off both of their uh, uh, comedic prowess so well, where they're driving up to the brother's house, and Rachel McAdams is like, "How's this big? Must be making up for something." And she's like, really hamming it up, and Jason Bateman goes, "No, I've seen his dick. It's pretty great." It's, pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> it's just they're like turning jokes constantly. Just, I'm thinking about yeah. the way that she handles a gun. In yeah. this movie, oh there's God. this one scene where, yeah. at this point in the movie, she does not realize that she has a real gun. Yeah. Right. They've just busted into this bar. Uh, they're kidnappers yeah. who have who have captured Kyle Chandler, uh, and she has everyone on the ground, and she thinks that she's playing a game. She right. thinks she's in like a an escape room out in, in the real world. She thinks she's in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> yeah. And so, so she's like, bam, 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 get on the floor. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. She's putting it up to their head, yeah. like, oh, you want she to put say it anything in her, now? She put, put it in her mouth for a selfie, but for a photo for selfie she put a loaded gun into her mouth and, and she, she did like, ah. and she bit it oh my it's god so good and then the, the scene where it cuts back to them in the bar and she's just put on third eye blind yeah and yes. she's dancing around the bar do, singing, do, the gun. Do, 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 do. It's, it's because as we talked about last week she's a fucking dork she's a dork and she's so good at yeah. being dorky yeah. but then she's also hot but then also like is relatable. like relatable yeah. and then when you call her hot, hot later in the movie she's like oh my god thank you right yeah. right she's, she's a, just fucking cool she's a, she she's seems a humble. she seems grounded uh, what is this? down to earth yeah i was gonna say earthy she seems but groundy. that's not what I was. <laughs> groundy. my my talent crush on her has grown exponentially because oh, yeah. we watched like i knew that she was great that's why we did this month and i knew she had this range but i've never watched her movies back to back mm. and i watched the notebook last week and i was just like oh my god <laughs> yeah. oh my god and then i put this movie on yeah. and i'm like how oh my god <laughs> I, yeah she yeah. just what she's able to do and yeah. how far... I mean, you talk about someone like Jason Bateman who yeah. is expertly playing one character every time, right. but is staying within a pretty... I mean, he can push his range. He does Ozark, right? Yeah. I don't mean to disparage him to prop no, someone no, no, else no, no, up. No, he's, he's the he same guy. But he's, he's playing a, a type. Yeah. She is all over the place and knocking Regina it out of the George? park. Regina George? Yeah. Like, iconic yeah. characters. <sighs> Loses herself Man. in them. Yeah, really does. Really does. And you... I mean, you hit the nail on the head where you were talking about uh, a female zoomies. Um, <laughs> last week. Last week, where it's just like, oh, this is just somebody being goofy for however yes. many hours a day. Um, and she pretty much is that for the entire yeah. uh, movie. And you're just with it. You're just with her the entire time. And you're like, oh, well, this is if this is who you are, I love you. I love you so much. And maybe we'll bring it, uh, we'll, we'll kind of, I, I jumped to like kind of the first act break, but we'll go back to setting up the characters. Something that I did really appreciate is how she is on her husband's side the whole uh, time. The whole time. Which They're, you don't get to see time. often. No. It's not just, it's not just her being They're like, They're a team. Well, yeah. It's like, oh, you, well, you're, your brother is taller than you. Your brother is more handsome and more charming. And it's just like, nah, I fucking hate yeah, him. Yeah, he's under. They're cutting you at every chance. The married yeah. couple, they don't ever have this moment where it's like, you did that? You like they yeah. never fucking pull apart or yeah. whatever. They are a unit the yeah. whole time. Yeah. She defends him, mm -hmm. he defends her. She wants to uplift him. She wants to get back yeah. at his brother. Like that They're, it fucking meant something yeah. to see that. I they loved are. it. And there was I mean, there was this, that moment where he finally admits, uh, spoiler alert, that he um his his the stress is not coming from his brother. It's coming from uh, being a father, right? Mm -hmm. Where he's just like, the I. he does the Pac-Man metaphor. And he's just like, I just don't want to um, give up and settle on life by having a kid because that's, you know, that's you saying I am done. I'm, I'm tapping out. Mm -hmm. This is basically what my life is going to be like. And 
she's just like, all right, shut up, grow up. And that I think there's just that one moment of like separation and then they're back to, yeah. to doing yeah. whatever they need to. And that that I think that plays to spats that couples have where it's yeah. just like, all right, I mean, we don't agree on this thing. It's but us versus the problem, not us versus each other. Versus each other, yeah. yeah it never got to that point. Why do I want to learn a new language? Because I want to keep my brain sharp because it helps you connect with people wherever you go. Rosetta Stone is the expert in language learning for 30 years and an award-winning app where you can learn anytime, anywhere. They've got 25 languages. If you can dream it, they got it. Korean and Chinese, yup. Spanish, French, Italian, German, and more. And I love that it prepares you for real life. This is going to go beyond just vocab. You're going to focus on speaking practice, pronunciation with their true accent feature, and more. They do it in bite-sized pieces. So you can learn and make real progress in as little as 10 minutes. You only got a little bit of time. That's fine. Chip away at it. And best of all, no tedious memorization needed. This is immersive, intuitive learning. For a limited time, our listeners can get Rosetta Stone's Lifetime Unlimited subscription, which gives you access to all 25 of their languages forever for 40% off. Visit rosettastone.com slash guilty today. Rosetta Stone, how language is learned. What I think lends into the joy of loving her energy and also like the other, like all of the other characters is that this movie does such a good job of putting a game within a game within, within, within a game. So every character, I, I, and you also get the knowledge of being an audience member mm -hmm. seeing the game, yeah. you know, zoomed out. So you have the joy of watching these people just flail about for yeah. really half the movie until they figure out that this is, in fact, a real kidnapping. And now they're on, yeah. you know, trial to figure out if they can really solve the game, right. which is the brother's kidnapping. And it's just, it's so smart because at first you're like, how the fuck did we get here? Yeah. But it makes perfect fucking sense when you're following like the theme of the movie, which is that it is a game of night. Yeah. Really quick, <laughs> just the, the fact that you said zoomed out and you see the game. All of the establishing shots are zoomed out in a way that it looks like game pieces. I, yeah. And I thought that that was so fucking brilliant. I forget the name of the technique, but it's something that Fincher uses in the social network during the rowing scene. Mm. That's something that people, my little film students might be familiar with that scene. It, um, I, I don't know if it's... Uh, anyway, whatever that... that It's a really shallow depth of field, but it, yeah, it makes the world look like a game piece. Like a, uh, like a so, you, so when every establishing shot, it looks like a life board. Yeah. Or Tilt shift. That, Tilt thank shift. you. Very Tilt cool. shift. Um, yeah, and then even in the car chases, it is um, it is in third person, like you're playing a video game. It felt mm -hmm. like so Grand Theft Auto. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Yeah, the, so um, the cam as the car is like weaving, yeah. the camera will kind of, it's like connected to it on a swivel. Yeah. Um, uh, we'll talk more about the direction because I've there's got a so lot many, to say. Yeah, so uh, well, apparently, a minute 30 into this movie, we meet uh, the Jesse star. Plemons. The star of the fucking movie. <sighs> Jesse Plemons. Plemons. Jesse, I don't know. So I, I, I You know been, when this freak shows up, you're about to have a good time. Yeah, oh, you're yeah. about to have a fucking good time. I don't, I don't understand how people can do so much with so little on their face and so little inflection. But even Jesse Plemons... And Jason Bateman are, I feel like, are masters of this. Yes. Where Je when, uh, when you meet Jesse Plemons in Breaking Bad, uh -huh. you see him Fuck, and you're just I'm like, I'm still scarred by I'm him. Yeah. In Breaking still Bad. scarred by that performance. Yeah. <gasps> He's just so quiet and normal. And then you're like, oh my god, this person is a psychopath. Yeah. And you see him in this movie, and you're like, oh my god, this psychopath is lovable. Mm -hmm. How? You How did we with, get here? You fuck with Fargo season two? Oh, yeah. One Never of the best of, seasons of television oh ever made, and he is perfect. Perfection. It's such a it's such a contrast, too. Like, I remember the first time, the first line I saw of him when I watched this in theaters, I went, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's what they want you to feel. They want you to feel like this character, he yeah. plays the next door neighbor, he is a cop. Oh, yeah, we didn't describe him. Thank divorced you. Divorced sorry, sorry from his that. wife, and he... Only was in game night because they were friends with the wife. Now yeah. that the wife is gone, they're like, finally, we can get rid of that fucking weirdo he's, cop neighbor. He's, he's holding his but little he white has dog. His little white dog, <laughs> and he is just in a dark shark stare. Yeah, very monotone. He is one of, I think, our best actors of our generation, and people might yeah. sleep on him a little bit. You, when when you mentioned the line, and it's so I howled laughing. Yes, where is. he's Jason Bateman's holding shopping bag, and he's like, "Nope, no game night tonight. Just the two of us." Yeah. He goes, 
three bags of Tostito scoops. I noticed. Yeah. First of all, the specificity of Tostito oh, scoops. Tostito <laughs> scoops is and so funny. If anything, this movie is sponsored by Frito Lay. Yeah. yeah. And, and, then, and then Jason Bateman goes, "Well, yeah, it was a uh, three for one." And he goes, "How can that be profitable for Frito Lay?" It's in the just, most it's just dead, so dead pan. pan. Beautiful performance. I could try for 10 years and never get a line delivery as good as that. Trying to lie to him. They are trying to lie to him. That is the game. They are lying to him every Every single interaction that they have. And trying to lie to a cop who also happens to be a psychopath is the name of the game. And it's fucking hysterical every single time. But he's he's not... I, I think he's less of a psychopath and more just desensitized... To one violence and then also um, cannot read like social cues oh, in, a, sure. in a weird way. Every couple has a game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you're and using I, the word. We're all using the word game in inter- But I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, to please. Uh, but like comedic game or want. Mm-hmm. So in with, with um, Rachel McAdams and Jason Bateman's characters, I, I blank on their names in the movie, but. Their whole thing is they're trying to have a baby and they're trying to figure out why his semen isn't uh, swimming upstream. And, and With, trying to best the brother, right? Prove yes, to best. them the, the methodology is to prove that I yeah. am better than you. Yeah, and better. then the brother is trying to prove that he is better than his younger brother and stay the bigger brother. And then we have one of my favorite games, um, Lamorne Morris, and I, I forget the actress's I name. Do. She's um, great, and I haven't and seen her in any. There's a lot right. of yeah. actors in here who I'm like, I've never seen you in anything, and you're wonderful. Why aren't you in yeah. everything? Right, exactly. Um, her name is Kylie Bunbury. Yes, her Ooh, name. what a fun what name. What a fun name to say. But they they have a whole game. They've been dating since middle school. 14. They had a break. She slept with a celebrity, and he's trying to guess the celebrity the, the entire, entire time. Movie. And it's so fucking funny where he's just like, you slept with Tommy Lee Jones. And she's like, what no. the hell? What are you talking about? And then, it, you uh, spoiler alert, you find out that she actually slept with Denzel Washington. The look t- on his face early in the movie, because at says, first he guesses Denzel. And first he says, no. And, and he has this, it's the best acting I've ever seen from yeah. Lamar Morris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he's like, is is it, is it, is it, <laughs> the deep hurt like, on that's his face. His is it greatest Denzel? fear. Yeah. Which, by the way, Denzel? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if I ever yeah. found out that Maggie's that Maggie had slept Denzel, with Denzel, I'd be it. like, well, yeah. I, there's nothing I can do. Yeah. Uh, you, you there's can't, nothing I can can't ever up. provide no. or offer. We can't live up to that situation. No. But no. There, it, it does. The guessing leads to one of my favorite lines of the movie. Where they are in a room and he's still trying to guess <laughs> guess who it is, and he and they're locked in this room and he was like, "I'm gonna burn it down with these." Does anybody have any matches? <laughs> and she was like, "You want me to to set fire Dude, in a no. windowless room? We're gonna we're gonna die essentially." And he was like, "Oh, so you slept with Bill Nye the Science Guy?" <laughs> <laughs> I I was fucking crying in the movie and and in the movie theater and to this day when i hear that line i'm it's just so fucking funny and the delivery is so fucking good and then the third couple which we haven't given the notoriety to he's from uh um search party no the blonde guy I believe he is from Search Party. I looked um, him up and he wasn't in anything that I knew. No, he's no, a big no. he's a big comic actor. Billy Magnuson? Yeah. yeah. He's in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. yeah. But is he and in Search Party? He his game to begin with is that every game night he brings a different girl who's plays like this dumb bimboy IG yep. model mm-hmm. behavior. Yep. And the Leads game to another good line yeah. of, of them going through all the beautiful dates. They're playing charades, and then she he was like, "This is like um they're top tier. They're the elite yes. people." And she says, "White, White people." people. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, everybody's like, "Whoa, Whoa. <laughs> oh no, oh no, no, no!" Which is so relatable. But then the game switches. <laughs> sorry, relatable. <laughs> which is so relatable, where you have a friend who you're you hate yeah, their yeah, partner. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. keep bringing horrible people yeah. around to your hangout. Yeah, right. On this one, it gets flipped to where he is now being shown up finally by a girl he brings to yeah. game night, who by is the great out Sh- of his Sharon league. Horgan. Sure. Yeah. Where is she from? Um, she was just in Bad Bad Sisters. Catastrophe ah. also. And catastrophe. Oh hell yeah! And very she and she was in the finally office. makes him look like the dumb blonde bimbo that he is. They're both so great. Billy Magnuson in this as. Yeah, the dumb bimbo yeah. friend, yeah. the man whore. He's so unbelievably funny. Yeah. And so in funny. a better world and in a just world, this would have been his star turn. Yeah. Like, this should have been for him what Hangover was for Bradley Cooper. Yeah. He's so 
so funny in this, like breakout status yeah. funny. Yeah. And it's yeah. just, it's criminal to me that he I, didn't become household after this. Yeah, yeah, I think that's like the most devastating part about this movie being overlooked is that everybody gives a lifetime mm. performance. Yeah. Here. It's so, f everybody is just on, on their game. Everybody's so fucking funny. Mm. Um, uh, going back to Lamorne and Morris and um, Kylie Bunbury, uh, their whole scene where he finds out that Denzel Washington uh, was the the man that she slept with, and then she's telling the story, and then you're like, oh, they're doing like a dramatic recreation with someone who is not Denzel yeah, Washington, which like is very him. funny. Looks yeah. like him. It's like almost like deep fake Denzel. Yeah, yeah, they're like, oh, they couldn't get Denzel for this part, so, so they did a pretty good job of recreating, of finding somebody, yeah. and it's just so funny that they're doing this because we're watching comedy, and then. She shows him a picture, and it's still the recreation yes. guy. And you're like, wait a second, <laughs> she didn't sleep with Denzel Washington yes, at all. Yeah. And like the the fact that he just gets to drag her through the mud about not having slept with Denzel yes. Washington, even though she was so proud of it, is so fucking funny. Uh, so okay, I want to give some love to the directing because it really felt like Goldstein and Daly. They directed the fuck out of this movie yeah, almost to a fault. It's like almost distracting to me at sometimes yeah. and like how cool and good it is. They it felt like they directed this thinking that they may never get a chance to direct again. Yeah. And they, that they to me to is how like a, every movie should be made. Yeah, they wanted it to be like a reel for them. Like you just put everything in your heart and in your yeah. soul. The opening montage has just all these really fun um, uh, uh, transitions. It's fast, it's witty. In random scenes, you'll get shots where you're like, whoa, where yeah. the hell did this come from? There's uh, one scene where they're trying to get Kyle Chandler out and a broomstick is, is knocking, knocking against a lock. Yeah. And every time it hits the lock and the lock like turns 90 degrees or 80, what, 170 degrees, oh, the camera shot. turns oh, so with it. It oh. was like the, the camera was on the lock I've itself. never that seen was, that. It was with fun. As lock cool. door scenes yeah. in movies I've seen, I've never seen one yeah. like that. Also, there is a one -er in a fucking comedy. Yeah. And when it's a they're good running one. through with the Fabergé egg in the mansion, that is one take or one ah, shot. Yeah. Um, you're right. They just, might have intersected. I mean, there's the of course they stitched stitched it for sure. Yeah. yeah, there's stitches, but it just it's still that fluid motion that you Really feel well from. choreographed, really yeah. well shot and thought through. I mean, you know, whether this was them saying that they wanted to direct a big movie like Dungeons and Dragons, it certainly mm -hmm. showed their ability oh, to yeah. do it. It's, it's um, so I, I think Dungeons and Dragons is a Hasbro. There you uh, go. Uh, and that's where Kel we got uh, it. Uh, <laughs> so Kelsey we get it. gets her. I wasn't so dumb after all. No, it's just I, I'm sure that they saw it and they're like, I mean, you could do yeah, toys. Yeah, you guys can do this. <laughs> the the fight scene with Kyle Chandler when the people when the uh, the thugs first break in to kidnap him. Yeah, is it's funny but also exciting. He gets thrown on a table. You get the recurring bit of wow, that's a glass table. That's a strong <laughs> yeah, glass table. Glass tables are acting yeah. weird tonight. That was so fucking funny. It's it's like in um, Twenty One Jump Street where. The, the I, cars wouldn't explode. Yeah, I, I've had the same thought. Yeah. Um, there's one scene that I feel like, like, okay, so for me, the reason why this movie, it's such a shame that this wasn't a huge theater movie and why I'm so jealous of the two of you. I said that this movie elicited such huge, huge reactions from yeah. me. And there are a lot of scenes that I could bring up, but there's one where Jason Bateman gets shot. Yeah. Uh, he has a bullet hole. And so they can't go to the hospital because then the cops will find out it'll put their brother in danger. And so Rachel McAdams goes into a 7-Eleven to get, uh, you know, she gets her alcohol, she gets her sewing, Tears. tweezers. She comes out. This scene uh. made me lose my fucking so mind. Funny. And every detail got funnier and yeah. funnier and funnier yes. where she comes out. And she goes, they didn't have any uh, vodka to disinfect, but I got a nice shard. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, good thinking, honey. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, he's looking through the bag, and he's like, uh, you got a uh, home, home goods uh, magazine? He's like, oh, there's a nice corn chowder recipe for later. Yeah. She's like, Thanks, honey. Yeah. So she's reading along the d how to remove a bullet. Yeah. Her phone keeps going to sleep, and she decides that instead of going into her phone to change the setting, she's going to use her nose yes. to keep it awake. Already ridiculous. Yeah. Hilarious. But she the, the the site that she's on she oh uh, she oh, like, yeah, oh this like is a right this is a right wing she was like this is a militia we website yeah. I'm just gonna be real this is a militia website so I'm just scrubbing through all the, the racism, racism. <laughs> yeah. so like just those 
and she's Details so cheerful yeah. the yeah. whole time too. Yeah. Um, but the moment that made me lose my mind is she's like, okay, so cut a small incision around the wound, and she takes a knife and she <laughs> slices yeah. halfway through yeah. his arm, yeah. and yeah. he goes. Uh, he starts screaming and he goes, big, big slice, way too big, way <laughs> too big. <laughs> and it's just like, I was at my home screaming. Yeah. It's just me and Maggie. Yeah. And like that, that needs a crowd. Yeah. And my favorite moment comes right after, like the way she delivers the next line where she's going in to dig out the <laughs> bullet and she I goes, what, what is that? that? She's hitting and something. Yeah, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> and he goes, what is it? And she goes, oh. Oh, that's bone. Oh, oh, oh that's not that's, good. Ooh, no. Like, oh, that's bone. Like, she's yeah. so like, oh no. As, as every like throughout the entire the, the performance, the same way as like when he's like, you shot me. She's like, I know. I feel really bad about it. Like, she's just so earnest and yeah. like, oh my gosh, this is the first time I've done anything. Yeah. And then you realize that the gunshot wound had gone clean through him, and they didn't they need, need to, to do, do any of this any anyways. Of yeah. But like all the oh. little details that build on each other. He has a squeaky toy in his mouth, so yeah. while he's biting down in pain you hear this, this ridiculous hilarious. squeak yes. uh uh you have uh, what what else was in that scene you have a lady that walks by who's looks kind of at them crazy them. oh yeah. jason bateman starts like oh i'm gonna be sick vomiting she's like and no if you start then i'm gonna yep. uh, classic, uh, classic. Uh, it's just so funny yeah. yeah um can we talk about uh jesse plemons's dog Oh. Uh, the cutest dog of all time. What's the dog's name? Who cares? Oh, it's so foofy. It's I like a Caesar's dog. Yeah. Loved the scene where Jason Bateman, they get so much mileage out of this wound. Yeah. So first, they have this whole great scene, right? I mean, you get the reaction to him getting shot. Then you get this meal of them trying to sew him up. Then he's like, I think I, I think you sewed my sleeve into my Ooh. arm. Yeah. They go over to Jesse Plemons' house because they need to break into his computer. And this is such a small detail, but I laughed so hard that I had to rewind. He drop, uh, Jesse Plemons hands him popcorn and drops it on his arm. Do you remember that? Yeah, and then he's just, <laughs> oh! And he's oh, just trying to, oh! Yummy! <laughs> How did you know my craving was for popcorn? Uh, but then the wound starts bleeding uncontrollably. Yeah, yeah. Onto onto the floor, which then goes onto the dog, which he just he notices after he like has to. First of all, there is this whole shrine to Jesse Plemons and his That's now right. ex-wife, um, Debbie. Uh, Debbie, that is in the corner. And so he's who he Jason refuses to let anyone say anything mean about her. Yeah. yeah, he sees he sees this. He's like, oh boy, this is really sad. So he goes and he like breaks into the computer, which is right next to the shrine. Um, and then he starts bleeding onto the carpet, which then um the draws in the dog, and he starts bleeding onto the dog. He notices the dog has blood on its snowy white fur. Yep. Um, and he starts to try to clean it off with a shirt of that Debbie's of face. Debbie's face. Um, which of course doesn't work, puts water on the dog. The dog immediately shakes the water <laughs> off because it's just like, I'm wet, so now I need to dry myself off. There's All of that blood everywhere. spatters onto the shrine, so it just looks... And he just goes, yeah, yeah fuck, fuck this. It. Fuck <laughs> this. <laughs> it's just like, I just need to get the and fuck out of here. leaves, which is so funny. It's such great writing. It's great comedy writing where... Every time you think something can't get worse, it gets, it gets so much worse, yeah. both within scenes, but then also within just the movements of the story. Yeah. They finally get this Fabergé egg. The Fabergé egg, they slam on the brake, and it shatters it immediately. Yeah, it it's so just fucking funny. The way they're able to get mileage out of these moments, I... I just think the world of these guys. Yeah. And then do we want to go towards the the spoiler endings? The like sure. twist on a twist on yeah. a twist, a hat on a hat on a hat? Absolutely. So we get that the Fabergé egg actually had a list inside of it of people on the witness protection program that the bad guys supposedly wanted. So they go to meet up on this sketchy bridge in like downtown Los Angeles with the one we all know that they shoot at. Third Street Bridge. And yeah, to meet They called with, it Fourth Street in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> to meet with the kidnappers who we think are the bad guys that are we're supposed to be game players. So you're in that game. It's revealed that they were kidnappers. You know what? We don't have to spoil this delight for people. Let's you just don't go think? to No, let's just go to the end climax. Okay. Yeah, the joy of it. Well, you go, because I don't know which one you're talking about. Just There's watching. so many twists. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think we need I the twists are so delightful and you should yeah, find them yourself. It, it won't it. ruin your enjoyment of it. Yeah. But at the end you get to see Jason Bateman and Rachel McAdams 
fully try and save their brother. Yeah. They end on a tarmac. I think we can take dare it from there. Dare I say Fast and Furious style? Yeah. It's uh, a plane fight. I think you dare. Uh, dare I say they Dara. reference uh, Taken 3. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Yep. By the way, though, watching a plane uh, uh, knock out the wheel of a... I'm sorry, watching, watching a, car. a car take out the wheel of a plane, I was like, that's pretty badass. Yeah. yeah. It was a it was a high like I thought we had already gone high caliber effects and fight scenes. And then we get this fucking private jet versus a stingray car yeah. scene. And it you're really, just like, this budget. Yeah, it really escalates on yeah. a level where it's just like this. You have to keep on reminding yourself this came from a game night. This yes. came from a very, very simple game night. Yes. And now we're watching espionage happen. Yes. And the way that I mean it's a Again, just a smart script. Like you get to watch. They're they're separated, and uh, Jason Bateman's trying to communicate to Rachel McAdams on how to beat a bad guy, and so he plays charades to her across the way. Yeah, and he's like, oh, "This is an adorable full circle moment." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like calling it out. Yeah. Can we and talk about I, the greatest line reading of all yeah, time? Yeah, I was going to 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 get into it. Um, but I feel like before, like just like a little preamble, I feel like a lot of movies treat death like it is just. It doesn't matter. Like yeah. they treat human Killing life. Killing bad guys. They, uh, left this, and right. This movie has one death, mm -hmm. and it lends to the greatest line read of all time: the henchman that is uh, chasing them down, that works for the actual bad guy, um, finally corners Rachel McAdams, um, and she had he has the gun to her, and he's just like. I got you, blah, blah, blah. Please, and then she's I have like, kids at home. Please don't kill me. I have kids at home. And he's like, not with that ass, you don't. And Hilarious. she's like, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the, it is the so funny. The look, the way that her mouth just kind of like. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> but it then um, there is a fight on the plane. Um, the fight le leads to them pushing the accelerator on the plane, which then makes the jet engine that the henchman outside is now standing in front of. He gets sucked into the jet. He dies. Explodes. Sp explodes. Splatters into a puree. in the chunks. And that lets Rachel McAdams off of the hook. And she's just like, yay. Oh, oh no, no, he, he died. died. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just so fucking funny. Because, again, we in when we're watching movies, we don't think about human life no. in this in that regard. Like, oh, I was like, oh my god. Well, I any mean, other movie just that would have cut of her being like, dun, 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 yeah, like just right. running off it's to like, like but so to cool. give it that moment it deserves is so funny. So funny. Well, and, and she because just, she's competitive too, yeah. it's such a through line of their characters. They want to win. Yeah. So she reacts as if she just got a Yahtzee. Yeah. Right. She just goes yes, yes. Yeah. and then realizes a it's man so just died. It's <laughs> hard to know if she is deeply affected by it or yeah. if she in that moment is going as a sociopath oh wait I'm uh, supposed to feel bad about this yeah. and I think it's a, a mix of both because yeah. later there is the bit where she comes inside of the she goes inside of the plane and she's just like well you know I just saw a man die but you yeah, know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm good I'm good I'm good yeah uh, we haven't talked right. about Kyle Chandler we've said his name a bunch yeah. but this is coach from Friday Night Lights yes it is, it is. he's very fine tell me He's hot, man. He's got that daddy, single daddy look. Yeah. Like the the, the single the father, father vibes. Yeah. yeah. I'd see and him in a bar with a stroller. Oh, yeah. 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 Drinking. Just he can't like, afford a stroller. No, he just, he's a, he just he put the baby, baby in a, in on, a bar stool. On a stool. Yeah. yeah. And he's just <laughs> supporting yeah. it. Yeah. Holding its trousers behind mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like he could do no wrong. Yeah. And he plays like a real fucking asshole, a real scumbag in this. But you still are like, ah. He's so he's so lovable. Yeah, Miles. I know you were a big Friday Night Lights boy. Love Friday Night Lights. Only saw the first season, but I loved it. Clear hearts can't of lose. It. Didn't make it to the second, but I heard that's where it gets weird, and then there's a writer's right. strike. Yeah, right. Oh, tell Lord. me about tell, tell me about Coach Taylor. Oh my God, he's so fucking hot, and I think that, <laughs> yes, like the main thing that's hot about him is that he really cares about the kids. And oh. There's a scene where one of the other coaches tries to like beat up one of his his students and Kyle Chandler picks him up shoves him he's like a short little guy he picks him up pins him against the wall and goes go to ever fucking touch one of my kids and it's really awesome hell yeah I he's love intimidating. it's cool though to see because this felt to me against type for him he's completely yeah. he's yeah. such a not he's so serious wholesome guy he's yeah. like a down south good boy I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna be honest I have never seen Friday Night Lights mm. but Jesse I, Blumens uh, Jesse Blumens I, they shoot each other. I wonder if that's how they got him for this. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I coach Chell will be there. <laughs> <laughs> Your coach will be every, there. Every time I hear Friday Night Lights, I always get it confused with any given Sunday. 
Oh, both what? football. Yeah, oh, I don't both know that. Days of the week, both <laughs> three word titles. Right. So Friday, I'm like, Friday. all right, which one am I talking? Which one am I thinking? Am I thinking of the the Jamie Fox one or the TV show? TV right. show. The TV show. Yeah, TV show. Got and it. I will say, I uh, don't care about football at all, but this show makes football so good to me mm. personally. Really? Yeah. Really? I just love when an actor is like they're given a project where it's like, hey, I want you to go nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle I Chandler, it. I want you to go crazy. You're a scumbag. Have fun. Right. Yeah. And he looks like he's having a blast. And I think that's, again, when you get dramatic actors, like there's, whenever, whenever I watch like Tom Hanks, or Tom Hanks hosting SNL, and he's just like, hey, you're a really good actor. Go be funny. I love seeing that type of shit because, again, you they, they seem like, oh, thank God, I finally get to do the thing and mm -hmm. play around like I've always wanted to. Mm -hmm. And it, it it really does, you know, play off in there. I have a fun fact that oh. I remember from this movie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jesse Plemons and the director didn't tell them, anyone, that he was going to play that character that way. That's awesome. Jesse Plemons almost didn't do this movie because he was shooting something else, mm. and he, like, really wanted to come back and do it. And so the first time that Jason Bateman and Rachel McAdams shot a scene with them, they, like, could not control <laughs> themselves because they had so. no fucking clue oh that he was going to act that way. They were like, we wow. lost all capacity they, to like function oh as actors my God. because he just played it like a psychopath. So fucking funny. They were, they were probably and laughing so didn't hard. Do, now I'm remembering, I saw this at the Arclight and the whole cast came in and did a Q&A oh. afterwards. Oh. That's awesome. Yes. They used to, that's the one thing I miss about Arclight. I miss that so mm. much. Remember like after butt feed days, we would all go see movies. Yeah. 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 Walk on down. Yeah. yeah. Walk across the street. It like was mm -hmm. not my favorite theater, but it was the best theater experience. Yeah. yeah. It had the best crowds. And the best food. I never ate the, the food. The best dinner. They had apple sausage dogs. <laughs> the restaurant. You're the only person I know who actually eats dinners at AMC's. All the time. Yeah. Often. If there's if there's the one where you can um eat and watch the movie where they like come in oh, and serve you. I go to that I one go all the time. That. I will go to that immediately. Oh, why are we not having our We should all we should only nights there. We should only have There's a good those. one on the west side that does nice. that. Okay. I'm into it. Right, Every now and then there will be a photo of Jesse Plemons that goes around on Twitter and people will realize, find out that he's married to Kirsten Dunst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they go like, how the, what the fuck? And I'm like, you don't understand that this man is one of the most gifted yeah. actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It is. How dare you? Honestly. To be great at something is so hot. Yeah. But, uh, I, I'll be real. I think that between him and uh, Paul Walter Hauser, it would probably two of my favorite actors working right now. Um, I will uh, genuinely bring up both, and of course, Jason Bateman, but I will bring up them as far as like, oh, what do you want your style to be like if you were to think about it, you know, 20 years from now? It's just like, if I can go out like those three. Oh, I'd Walter be... Hauser is so weird, He's though. so fucking funny. As a, as a real person? No, as a, as his characters, he is those guys. Like, yeah. did you see Blackbird or whatever? Yeah. Hey, have you seen Blackbird? No, I it's an Apple TV show. Not going to lie anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he plays, I almost lied and said I watched Friday Night Lights. I didn't. I'm uh, a fraud. <laughs> he plays a serial killer, yeah. and it is so oh, fucking scary. It's so he just, weird. He talks like this, and he just kind of talks like this. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really scary. Yeah, I don't People know. talked a lot about this show. It's Blackbird is really good. good. It's, it's, it's really good. It, um... What's, what's my guy's name? Um, Taron Edgerton. Taron Edgerton. Buff Tom Holland. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think they're going to go after him for Wolverine, which would be very cool. Uh, <laughs> I thought he meant Paul Walter Hauser. Oh, yeah, no, he would be a great Wolverine <laughs> as well. Taron Edgerton. Taron yes, Edgerton. Got it. Yeah. Well, have we covered it all? I, I just like, um, there's so much to talk about, but I don't want to get into a place where I just say, and then this happened and it was yeah. really funny. Yeah. And then this happened. You it was really also should really watch fun. it because we I, did save yeah. a lot of like yeah. good money, I think good it's, funny moments. I think it's great. And I think that there is no joke wasted. Mm -hmm. And any sure. joke wasted, they wrap it up in the uh, the credit sequence at the end. And is that so fucking good? I think that that is like a, a, a beautiful piece of like, storytelling uh, that people leave on the cutting room floor most of the time uh the, cr the credit sequence but watching it being used where they're just like no we're going to use all the time allotted to the whole buffalo yeah the whole buffalo and make it as funny as possible is that a saying 
Yeah. You sort of mentioned this a little bit before, but this movie as a piece of where comedies are going, because I think that you mentioned like the big blockbuster comedies like The Hangover. This is a movie that feels as yeah. global as that, but is much kinder mm -hmm. and feels like kind of softer and built for I don't know, almost like more people in a way. But I don't know, yeah, where do you think that well, comedies it, go? And it's what interesting that? is that, yeah, this is a, it's an R-rated comedy, yeah. but it, it gets its laughs not through meanness. So yeah. often our comedies are going to get that rating because they're just throwing around filthy language, which then we look back five, ten years later and go, why the fuck are they saying these things? <laughs> like, um, like in The Hangover, paging Dr. F is in the, the trailer. It's yeah. it's chaos. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas this gets it, uh, to me, it's my preferred way, my preferred type of comedy where it's, you're eliciting huge reactions. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's set pieces, but also you're watching scenes where you go, oh, it can't get any worse. And then it gets yeah. so much worse. It gets worse. so much worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's just purely through escalation. Through escalation and like, Things that you know, like that the the scene where it's the the arm is sliced open, mm. it's not unwatchably gross, but it's like, oh, that's a crazy fucking yeah. moment. And then they just milk the hell out of it. And again, it's it's this thing. It reminds me almost like horror, where you are you're bringing emotions to the brink and pushing people where all they can do is scream and laugh. I, I think the best movies elicit huge reactions they move you they move you emotionally and this movie did it i i was really just so enamored with it, it do you know this was the second movie they directed wow what was the first uh they, they did a vacation reboot starring ed helms um that did didn't go over well uh i haven't seen it it didn't get well reviewed and wow. didn't do well they had been writing for a while i mean there i we talked about this on the dungeons and dragons episode but uh, uh, John Francis Daly's career trajectory is wild. Right. He, and actually, I think it's worth talking right. about again in case people don't know or you missed that episode. He was a little boy on Freaks and Geeks. Yes, he was. He disappears, yep. comes back, he's on Bones. Mm -hmm. And Bones. he is a series regular on Bones, Bones for Bones. several seasons. Bones. And while he's... Bones! Bones. <laughs> <laughs> and while he's bonesing away, he uh, meets his writing partner, Jonathan Goldstein. They write together. Um, they they start booking a bunch of great projects, Horrible Bosses included, which I think is a super fucking it's underrated so comedy. Funny. So funny. We don't watch it anymore because What's His Nuts is uh, Kevin Spacey's a oh, horrible, no. freaky person. But we do get to watch him be um, horrible. Hor horrible yeah, good and, and defiled. Colin Farrell is so fucking funny in that movie. I mean, the whole, that movie's so great. Um, but then they go on to, they wrote Spider-Man Homecoming. They, uh, yeah. like, it's just the way that he just popped off and has crushed so many movies. And then this, He's their second film, they directed the fuck out of it. The, the, yeah. the only way that I can, like, describe their writing style is delightful. Mm. It is yeah. it is always, like, even even them going after the, like, John Hughes-ness of, of teenage um, coming-of-age stories for Homecoming. John, am I, am I, yep. am I, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and having it feel like um, if uh, Ferris Bueller was a superhero movie is fucking fantastic. And with this, uh, with Game Night, with Dungeons and Dragons, with Horrible Bosses, all of those comedies are literally just leaning on um, more of the situation than just being awful and mean. Yeah. And it's it's really nice, honestly. I have to imagine too, like the support that he must have had, they must have had from like Jason Bateman, because if this was only their second film and they put their fucking yeah. style ussies into this. <laughs> yeah. Like that is bold to be given like, you know, a comedy, like an art comedy, sure. But like to give so much fucking style to yeah. it, they were like, fuck this. If yeah. this could be our last film, like if it's not successful, like sure. our first one, we're going to do it. And I have to imagine the actors just being like, if you had bad ones that didn't support you, just being like, look at these fucking filmmaker bros <laughs> trying to do these Fancy shots, killing time during our days, and they fucking paid off. Yeah, but I think like Jason Bateman, um, he loves that shit. Directing. Yes, he so does. So he's just like, oh man, he I, he loves. He is one, and he yeah. just loves the director. I mean, him <laughs> bathing Ozark in blue, yeah, um, is a choice, but it worked out. It yeah. just makes it makes the project that much more um, watchable, in my opinion. But 
yeah, I, I, I feel like if they come to him as directors and like explaining all of these things that wise you, you know all of these things that they're gonna go for and then just be like hey what if we put a a one take in a comedy he's probably like yeah i'm done with that yeah, yeah that makes sense I that's love sick it. uh you know you asked the, the way this conversation jumped off is you asked like what is the future of comedies if comedies like this can't succeed yeah and the answer is i don't know yeah it seems like right now what is happening is that comedies are all moving to streaming Dreamers. there's not a market for wide release comedies, our our best hope. Uh, there's that Jennifer Lawrence uh, yeah. R-rated comedy coming out yeah. later this um, year. It looks funny. So like we need comedies to succeed because we need a market for them. A again, I just like this movie played so well to me. Yeah, and it would play ten times better if I were in a crowded room. And I don't mean to keep beating that point over and over again, but. I will never forget the feeling that I had of being in a sold out screening of Superbad. Yeah. The way mm. that people were howling yeah. and losing their fucking minds. It was, it's great. It's, it's fucking beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to 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 feel other people have a um unconscious re reaction to something. Mm -hmm. It's just like it's just this is this is what it is. Something is just so objective objectively funny. Or ob objectively delightful to the point where I elicit a reaction that I have no control over. It's no, yeah, it's you lose control. Yeah. And people are always surprised when I tell them how much I love horror movies. But yeah. like the reason I love Evil Dead is because it skirts that line of horror and comedy. Yeah. And it's because you lose control. It, yeah. It brings something out of you where you have no choice but to scream yeah. and scream as loud as you can. I don't mean scream of like, oh fuck, I'm scared. Yeah. It's scream of like, oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> this is it's disbelief. <laughs> yeah, this is a, this is a tangent, but this is a, truly one of my favorite movie moments. And just just that a delighted Kelsey. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. it was like such a, like it was like the same reaction, just louder. <laughs> no, one was me being oh jump scared. God. Oh my <laughs> god. And the other was oh. fuck. Fuck. It's just like disgusting. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bit the of a line reading was different. Okay. Yeah, it was. Oh my god. It oh was. no, he's dead. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, he died. Oh no, he died. But yeah, a, a bit of a tangent, but just based off of people reacting in a theater and why theaters are so fun. In the first Avengers movie, um, the line um, when he turns into the Hulk and he's just like, that's my secret cap. I'm always angry. And then just turns around and he hits the shit out of that worm. When that <laughs> happened, I was in, I was in the, um, I was in the theaters packed out. I was in the, um, the handicap row. And so there's like, you know, the front row and then there's a huge gap and then more seating. When I tell you when that moment happened, the entire row Ooh. stood up and started running back and yeah, forth. I believe it. Because it was just such an <laughs> exciting <laughs> time. Really fun time. It was just so fucking fun. Like, why wouldn't you want that in a com a comedic form? Yeah, I'll uh during like the height of the pandemic, I definitely watched that that clip from Avengers where like they all come together and it's the crowd recording yeah. and everyone goes, <gasps> Yeah, and I was just like sitting alone scene. in my apartment crying. <laughs> what it's about. It Tears of so, happiness. That's why we made this it podcast. So it's so good. Like even in Infinity War when they everybody dies and like it just ends on him being happy with what he did. <sighs> that breath and just the quiet. Yeah. Like I remember I remember watching that and I remember seeing people cry like mm. full full fucking tears. I, I, I literally just saw something on Twitter this morning where somebody Somebody was just like tweeted in like whatever that movie came out, a picture of someone in a stretcher and just like, yo, somebody just passed out after watching the <laughs> end of Infinity War. It's awesome. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's that's what movies do. That's what they, that's what makes them so fun. Not the passing out, but the reaction. Y'all ready for some fun facts? Let's yeah. do it. Uh, we don't have a ton. The first one is a tilt shift lens was used to give several oh, wide aerial yeah. shots a miniaturized look. Yeah, we know. We know. We already. We're observant. We already figured that out. We're film people, and we had Miles look it up for us because we forgot what it was yeah. called. <laughs> we all went to school. <laughs> Uh, so before they filmed the movie, the cast members got together for their own game night. <gasps> Adorable. Stop. That's uh, really cute. They played Clue. Boring. Oh. And joking. Oh, oh. Have you played Clue? When was the last time you played Clue? Literally like a couple weeks ago, and it's wow. still so much fun. I even have it at my home. Oh, wow. And they played Joking Hazard. Okay. I don't know what that is. It's a Cards Against Humanity-esque game from Sounds the people like who it. do Cyanide and Happiness. It's oh. fun like twice. I love Cyanide and Happiness. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. 
All, I don't mean to. It's, you should buy the game. It's a good game. <laughs> I don't. I don't like the Cards Against Humanity games. That's I feel not for like me. it. It force. It's like I'm. I. I don't need a card to be funny for me. I'd yeah. rather people write the cards than we do like bowl of fun. fun yeah, the, trades. Um, so what are they called? The, quiplash. The, the, the quiplash. Quiplash is, really is that that'll always be better. Um, what is it? I was gonna call it jackfruit. The jack. Jack Jack game. Jack Jack box. Box game. Oh, okay. Wait, this is a fun, fun fact. Is and my answer is Quiplash. What's your favorite game night game? <gasps> Ooh. Settlers of Catan. Yeah. You Except know. it like is not a good game night game because it's um, so. <laughs> says you, someone oh. who's not good at it. Fuck yeah. I have <laughs> screenshots from when okay, and during the pandemic, Kelsey and I would play it over Zoom. Every and one time I beat all night. you fuckers ten to three, and I still had that screenshot. On I my would computer. like to see it. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Saying All I'm, I'm saying is that, that I am still the reigning champ of my squad. Two years running. Yeah, yeah, maybe because I stopped playing with me. Do you play you were Settlers? Scared. I've never played it. Oh, it's so good. You'd love it. Yeah, we I'm should. Sure. It's nerdy. It's right up your alley. It's yeah. fun. It's fun as hell. Ticket to ride. <laughs> Nerd. Love a ticket to ride. -y. Dork. Piece of shit. I'll also say a hot rack right here. If you're playing celebrity, you know the game where you write down a bunch of stuff, fishbowl, whatever. First round is usually uh, catchphrasey. Second round is charades. Third round is one word. Fourth added bonus round. Have people do it under a sheet. Mm. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. That is funny. At that point, you're pretty aware of what the stuff is, but people That's being funny. it under a sheet, is you just see the outline of them. It's that sad. is hysterical. Um, I, I do hate how much I'm playing into the, the nerd alley, but uh, I love uh, Munchkin, which is a very fun like kind of D&D If you have game. a wine cork and a lighter, playing Ibble Dibble is Ibble -dibble. maybe the funnest party game You guys game are just making stuff up. I swear to God, look yeah, it up. You guys so are Tongo, Tongo, my favorite You favorite almost game. got me at Munchkin, but Ibble Dibble, I draw uh, the Ibble when, I have, when, I tell, when I show you pictures, you'll laugh. Hee hee ha ha, so very hard. Ibble Dibble. Now, I've got some crazy fucking news because Rachel McAdams was not the original choice, which how? No. How dare you? How dare no. you? But also, well, it, it would, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the first choice was someone who couldn't do it and or could do it, and then they found out that Rachel McAdams could, and, and they, they were like, her. oh, yeah, yeah, let's just get Rachel mm. McAdams. I don't know why this person didn't do it, but I will say that if you're not going to go after Rachel McAdams first, you better have a damn good reason, and it's because they wanted Amy Adams. Mm. I prefer Rachel Mick, but at least it's in okay. the Adams family. Okay. <laughs> da -na -na -na. Nice. Okay, That's I like that. Uh, but Amy Adams, goddamn, she's a great actress. Maybe we'll do an Adams, Adams anniversary. Denzel Sember also, I thought. Ooh. Denzel Sember? <laughs> How in the world does that make any sense? But I love it. <laughs> also, Miles, a little sexist that we don't have some Rachel McAdams sounds. Okay. Nope. Honestly, Ooh. you know what? No taken. You have two You have two weeks. I think I have no weeks. Give, oh. Give it to me, Rachel. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> Rachel. Uh, Jason Bateman was originally set to direct the film. Oh. Yeah. He's a great director. He's yeah. a very good director. Yeah. Uh, JFD and JG, that's John Francis Daly Got and it. Jonathan Goldstein for those keeping score. Yeah. Uh, they said that they would only work on a rewrite if they were allowed to direct the film. Wow. Yeah. And JC Bates stepped that's aside. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Sometimes you got to do cool. that to get a project made. I love it. And, uh, you know, they had, he had worked with them before on yeah, so you uh, trust him. Horrible, Horrible Bosses. bosses. Yeah. I think Game Night or Identity Thief was before this, too. Mm. So they did a rewrite on something that they directed. Even though they are not credited as the writers. Wait. That's cool. Now it's time for us to decide, is this film a guilt? Ple no, it's pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yeah. We're pleasure. only doing pleasures this month. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's Rachel McAdams. Rachel McAdams. It's, uh, it's a pleasure by, yeah. by far. I think it's, again, one of the funniest things that have come out in the past couple years. All right. Let's talk about our pleasures. These are things in media we're yeah. enjoying. And because this is a game night special, I'm going <gasps> to give you a game. Yeah. Uh, I think people in the Guilty Familia will love this game. It's called the Blockbuster Game. It's a real delight. It, uh, it, if you love movies, you will love this game. Uh, you have three categories where you have to quote it one word and uh, maybe like act it out. And so you get like a bunch of cards and it'll be like Shrek and uh, I don't know, yeah. Princess Bride. And so you're like, okay, I think I can get them served for Shrek. I'll do donkey and I'll put it in like my thing. That's going to be my one word. And then for quote, it's like, okay, Shrek. Ogres are like onions. Cool. What? So you decide where you want to do it. But what my favorite part of the game is, is you go head to head to decide who goes first and you'll pull a card and it'll be like movies with aliens go and we just you oh, and i back go back that, and yeah. forth until yeah. one of us can't name it that's and funny. honestly i could just play that part of the that's game that's a whole drinking cool. game it's so fun yeah, yeah cool. blockbuster games no, it's a good I time um i'm gonna actually do a product 
Mm. I don't know if that counts, but this bag I saw on TikTok. It is called the Carry On uh, Wardrobe Bag. It was like 30 bucks. When I show you the mechanics of this bag. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how I can be impressed by a bag. It is. I guess how many pairs of pants I have in here. She's unzipping the sides. It's it's opening. Oh, it's like a demogorgon's face. It, it is like a demogorgon. <laughs> opens up as a demogorgon. This is just my makeup bag. I have two jean jackets, four shoes, eight pairs of pants, and two t-shirts, and I still have room to spare. Wow. And the, you fold the clothes in the bag so that it becomes the structure of the bag. So all of my clothes are in here. She, like... It's basically like a, a duffel bag that lays flat. Yes. Yeah. And then it the, opens up like a box. It needs clothes in it in order to sustain a shape. They gotta get some wheels on that bad boy. I saw you and struggling to over. carry it. Yeah. Well, it's got a it's got a strap. That's thirty my, bucks though, not bad. Thirty bucks. Is, yeah. And it's cute. It's pink. It's like and leathery. Use Kelsey's code. Oh, <laughs> bag. DM me. <laughs> bag DM boy. Me. Bag bag girl. <laughs> bag girl. Bag 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 Kelsey. Use Kelsey's okay. bags at okay. checkout. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Rick, you go. Kelsey loves bags. I love bags. Okay, listen up, you little bitches. <laughs> if you're not playing the new Zelda, <laughs> Tears oh of the Fucking God. Kingdom, I so swear scared. to God, Sarah? I swear, <laughs> I swear to God, it is it is one of the best products that Nintendo has put out in years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In I'm fucking years. I'm terrified to play the game. It, it, I'm gonna get. It's gonna ruin my life. It'll absorb your life. Yeah. It'll absorb your life. Not from the story, which is fantastic. Not from the scope of the world, which, which is also fantastic. But the amount of creativity they just give you is insane. It's just like, hey, here's a box of toys. Figure out how to get to this place. <laughs> Figure out how to get to this landing. Figure out how to defeat this boss without any help at all. It is phenomenal. It it is one of the first, one of the first games outside of like Elden Ring and 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 ones that are like um, purposefully hard and purposefully confusing. It is one of those games that is just like you are smart enough. Figure it out. <laughs> That's all I have to That's say. You like it more than Breath of the Wild? Yeah, I like it more than Breath of the Wild. That's what and I've, I've, I haven't even gotten close to um, scratching the surface on it. Have you built a giant bridge yet? Um, I've, I've, I've built mm -hmm. a couple of bridges. Uh, not a giant bridge. Mm -hmm. I've built a rocket car at yeah. this point. Oh, yeah, but yeah. that's about it. Hell yeah. So good. It's so this game. I don't know when I'm going to have time. But Let's stream I'm it at work. It's a good idea. Yeah. Hey, do you guys want to do for the next four months? Tripod is just going to be me playing Zelda and <laughs> kind of kind of muttering under my breath. <laughs> just yeah. the sounds muted in the background. Yeah. And just like, click, 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 click. yeah. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, join us next week when McAdams Mania continues. We will be watching Mean Girls. That's fetch. Very nice. Thank nice. you. I'm at Courtney on all things. I'm Kelsey Darren on all the things. I'm Garrett Bernard on all the things. And until next time, oh, thank you. Oh, <laughs>